news for the people in real time. Politically incorrect. Now you're 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 Yes, family. Greetings, greetings, family. Greetings and welcome to Politically Incorrect, where we get it correct. If we not correct, please correct us. As always, greetings in the name of His and Her and Peel Majesty Emperor Heidi Selassie the First and Empress Wazira Menin. One perfect balance. Well, it's a wonderful Wednesday already. Like if you, I mean, like this, these the time is just moving by quickly quickly just happened to be coasting by coaxing by coaxing by and so it's crazy when you stop and think about it my thing is that i don't know what exactly is going on right now all across the globe it is like can't get a break man cannot get a break at all at all at all but can i tell you all something When you stop and think about all the things that's going on right now, like literally everything that's going on uh, across the globe, and you just kind of take a step back and look at it, being honest with yourself, what what would you say to yourself? Like if you had a chance to say something to yourself, what would you say to yourself? What could you say to yourself? I mean, you look at the you look at your eye, you look at where you live. You look at the region, you look at the globe. I mean, there's so much, so much trouble in the world right now. There's so much trouble everywhere you turn. So what, that means that nothing good is happening? Of course, good things are happening. So I'm gonna give a minute or two for you to go tell your friend and tell a friend, and we're gonna share some good news tonight. We're gonna share some great news tonight. Some good news about Oh man, we gonna share the good news about the land. Good news about the land, because you know we've been having these conversations lately, and they're all relative, really, when it comes to these politicians and all kind of stuff, and crossing floors and stuff, and land fraud and and a, a lawyer's forging documents. Like, I mean, by the way, I first of all let me say shout out to Rhonda, <laughs> shout out to Rhonda who picked me out of a crowd because of my voice. So politically incorrect, right? It's like, um, so watch you all the time. So big shout out to Rhonda. Rhonda, I give thanks for you and your support. Um, give thanks to everyone who take the time to to like, share, and you know, tell a friend and tell a friend. Cause that's the only way this is getting out. Like this, this is this is the only way this is getting out. Because you told someone and someone told someone, and probably someone told you. So be sure to pass on that knowledge freely, 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 freely. This is not a paid program. I am I'm not being paid for this program, but the love and the support is invaluable. So big shout out to everyone making it happen out there in cyborg space. Now, for those who pay close enough attention, yeah, I just did something smooth, but um, those who paying attention might notice it. Those who not, maybe, you know, you pay close attention. Nevertheless, <laughs> I love it. I got some stuff I'm gonna share tonight, man. We're going to get into this land thing. We're going to take a little trip. We're going to discuss. I found a link about some Barbados history. I got to share it with y'all. Very interesting commentary. A um, lot of food for thought. A lot of food for thought. And I want to shout out the inbox crew for the other link that's going to talk about. We're going to Jamaica. In fact, we're supposed to have a presentation soon in Fade. We have this thing called Fear the Night. We look at some documentaries and we discuss them afterwards. And usually that's done in-house with the Fade community. Uh, for those who might be interested in being a part of that, I am going to mm, before the before the program is before the program is concluded, I'm going to put the number up, and 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 you know you want to get involved in that, you can let me know you want a ticket to the theater tonight. You know you're gonna to have to just type it in and and WhatsApp that you you want to you want a ticket to the theater tonight, and therefore we would know that we can send you the link, the Zoom link. Could use this on Zoom. Um, I don't necessarily do it directly on the the live. But we do it on the Zoom. So until the website is up and running where you can actually log in and come on in, um, we do it on the Zoom. So if you're interested in being a part of Theater Night, I'm going to put the number up in a bit and we can go into that. 
But before I get into that, I got to share some other stuff. I got to share some other stuff. And I got a lot of calls regarding the last two programs as it pertains to land fraud and what's going on in Barbados. And so, I mean, calls even from Brooklyn. I want to shout the people in Brooklyn as well that called me, the folks in UK that called me, the folks on the street that stopped me, that, you know, told me they had a similar situation. And um, I just want to say goodnight to everyone. Really, really, really thank you for sharing. And, and the message is getting out there. You know, all the messages messages are getting out there. So we're going to touch this tonight again. You know, we talk about these individuals who represent the opposition, Mr. Ralph Torn. And yes, I'm, I got to go back at Mr. Ralph Torn because I ain't, and I ain't hearing nothing. I ain't seeing nothing, you know. So maybe he'll be on those other programs and those other platforms in the next few days to you know to discuss some of these issues. We won't. And like I said, I don't mind having opposition, but opposition for the sake of opposing with no uh, viable um, alternatives. I mean, it's just noise, man. You're just agitating the people and discussing political business. Well, I should say business. I, want, I wanted to say garbage, but political laundry. Let me use a different word to send a, a different message because it's all political laundry, just hearing what the other ones did and didn't do. We want to hear viable alternatives. You don't just say, oh, we don't agree with that. You know, put it back the way it was. No, I mean, if it where it was is, is good, discuss how it is good and why it should stay that way. Let's don't say, let's don't oppose for the sake of opposing. Viable solutions, what we're looking for, you know, at least some sort of alternative idea as to why you think they shouldn't do what they're doing. So, yeah, I want, I want to, I want to definitely put that out there in the early. Um, we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to just be opposing. You know, what I mean, the whole point of government is to um, immiserate the people. That's what's going on. I mean, if you really think about it, I mean, that's really all they do. They focus on immiserating the people, putting you right back, as far as they're concerned, where you need to be. And we're going to look at some of that stuff tonight. Got some videos to share, so you're going to need one of those links, like your pen or paper or screenshot. Keep up with this one. So before we get into all, I got to go down this particular road first that is critical. I mean, this one right here is is how do i say man this ain't this ain't good family this is not good this is definitely 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 real news for the people in real time so having said that so we've not been paying attention lately what's going on in kenya kenya has been doing a number of things and quite frankly mm, some not so good things these politicians for the sake of advancing the nation make these deals with these devils and i gotta call them devils because they're not in the interest of advancing for the whole they're about advancing for the selected few and by selected few i mean the few who gonna benefit financially from what they plan on doing so we're going to take a trip real you can't make this stuff up family and by the way this is a warning to barbados i can't listen I used to have it. I don't even have, I mean, let me see if I still have it. Give me a second. Let me see if I still have it. Cause I knew I had it before. Let me see if I still have it. I, I have it. I don't, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I, I, I'm not seeing it. Mm -mm. I ain't seeing it. I used to have an alarm. It was an alarm. It was a red light it used to flash. An alarm used to go off. I used to play the alarm. Let me tell you right now, family, on a serious note, this right here is an alarm. If you're not paying attention, pay attention to this. Make sure you tell your family about what I'm about to show you. And this is not a joke. Like, I mean, look, man, <laughs> if I, I'm gonna look for one a later, but I definitely need to sound the alarm on this one. This is something to pay attention to. What's going on in Kenya is coming to a community near you. Watch this. Now, it even gets worse. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is continuing its global push to support its so-called government-backed digital ID programs, and this time setting its sight on Kenya, where it will advise the government on that country's Maisha Naba digital ID initiative that is currently under development. So, according to a Kenyan news agency, Gates' role is assisting the Kenyan government 
in its development and the rollout of Maisha Number was announced after a recent series of the closed door meetings with Kenyan President William Ruto. According to biometric update, Maisha Number is supposedly expected to address different challenges, such as identifying and authenticating citizens, safeguarding primary registration documents such as birth certificates and national identity cards, and improving the management. We had it back. Hold the on. program. Let me pause it. You're going to go back a bit in case we miss a segment there. I was trying to signal to y'all the part that talked about birth certificates. This is, this is this is how you know this thing is going to get real. When they talk about the digital ID is going to replace birth certificates, no longer a piece of paper. How is that possible? I'm going to play this section again, family, and I need you to play close attention update Maisha number is supposedly expected to address different challenges such as identifying and authenticating citizens safeguarding primary registration documents such as birth certificates and national identity cards and improving the management of the social programs and government operations the project has been met with skepticism in some parts of the country rights groups have also been expressing concern over the possibility of discrimination and the erosion of privacy but listen i just told you in the very nice way now let me just put it blatantly to you now before she gets and puts it blatant i'm gonna let her put it blatant i hope y'all heard about that part when it talked about replacing birth certificates and the national id so wait a minute digital id is a digital id and I can't, I mean, where did Barbados get the whole idea from in the first place? Didn't me and Motley also meet with Bill Gates and had conversations? I'm just asking. Because although this digital ID is nothing new, like I showed you all in a previous presentation, especially the one we talked about, digital IDs. In fact, I, I mean, I'm going to pull that one up in a minute and, and show you. Um, uh, this one? This one. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to pull that up and show you in a minute. I'm, I'm going to give you that one in a minute. Without question. I'm definitely going to give you that one. It's a must. It is a must. Let me go here. I'm trying to get it so I can pause it so it doesn't come on and, and be too loud. That was crazy. So if we didn't know before, I think it's important that we start to pay attention and realize that. Let me pause this. If we don't realize that this thing is happening in real time, it's happening in real time. When they decide to implement the other aspects, see right now the digital IDs has been handed out in Barbados, according to them, in large enough amount. Because they need to get majority of the public to buy into this in order to overwhelm the rest of the public. So right now they had a pause because they're not really pushing it as much as they were pushing it before unless they're doing it quietly. But here's the deal. A lot of people, maybe not as much as they would have hoped, have gone for it and, and collect, well, sign up for it. Some actually went and collected. Some haven't gone. Some just waiting and some not really sure and some ain't going at all. But here's the catcher though. When they decide, because they tried it with the elderly folks where they said they wanted to make it where you go on the bus, you use your digital ID card and you would, you know, you would tap it on the bus thing, whatever, I would have it works. And the elderly folks were to ride the bus without paying the elders. Although I thought the elders were riding for free already, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there was some, maybe I missed a few meetings. Nevertheless, there's other aspects they started to bring onto this card. You can do this with it. You can go and do this with it. You can do your registration with it. You can identify, you know, your voting status with it. And they keep adding and adding and adding. So basically they're looking to put everything on it. They didn't say that up front. But if you got enough common sense, you would know that is where they're going. Now, like I said, I'm allowed this sister to go and put it bluntly. Listen to me. Listen to this carefully, family. Like this is a warning. This is an absolute warning to the people of Barbados and the region because that's where they're going to come first. The program targets the birth of new babies. So once you have your baby, 
before your baby leaves the hospital, you no longer get a paper birth certificate, but then you get a digital one that is somehow implanted somewhere on somebody's body. Think about that, but have a listen to this. Um, the digital ID, which has been a big problem to us for a very long time, is now on a testing mode for the next two months. I have been assured by all the stakeholders, led by the ministries concerned, that by December, we will be able to launch digital ID where every Kenyan don't have to carry any paper, plastic or otherwise, as an ID that they should be able to be identified digitally using their iris or their fingerprints, and we can transact without the necessity of people struggling to identify who they are. And um, <laughs> the most the proudest part of it is that we don't have to spend the billions that we have spent on all the other uh, manenos, as uh, all of you know. We're taking things that are, you know, genetically modified organisms and we're injecting them in the little kid's arms. We just shoot them right into the veins. We're just shooting them right into the veins. Shooting them right into the veins. <laughs> Family, I'm going to pause here a minute just to acknowledge, you know, a good night to you, Alex. I see you, brother. Good night to you. Though. I see you, Mr. Benjamin. Good night. Greetings to you too, brethren. Um, I see you too. Greetings, family. Shout out to all the family paying attention and tuning in. Good night to you too, Rhonda. Yes, 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 yes. Got a special shout out to Rhonda, man. Jackie, I see you too, man. I see you too, family. Give a shout out to everybody. Smiling butterfly. Shout out to Black Lion Security. Mr. Clark, greetings, greetings, greetings. Greetings to you too, brother. Beverly, I see you too, man. To all the to all the politically incorrect family, to all the fade family. And I mean, a lot of y'all would know that politically incorrect family has merged basically into the fade family. For those who don't know, again, I'm gonna put the number up. We're doing a lot of things quietly. Um, we're not about the talk, we're about the action. If you don't believe me, the number's going to be on the screen in a second. I see you too, brother. Microsoft, these guys ain't playing. Greetings too, my brother. Rastafari, long time no see. Let me just go ahead and put that up there, man. For those who are interested, man, the number's on the screen. Tell a friend to tell a friend. The WhatsApp number is there. If you're interested in the Fade Initiative, I see what's going on. Send me a WhatsApp. Somebody will shout you out for sure. And we can have conversations going from there. If you're interested in the theater nights where we do watch documentaries and we do discuss them afterwards, also send me a link to the number. It said you want a ticket and we'll be able to send you an entry pass, complimentary, um, for free, <laughs> for sure. But this right here, digital ID replacing birth certificates. Now, why is that important? Why is that important? Why is it that this digital ID replaces the document you know as a birth certificate? Because guess what? You're governed by consent, and by consent, I mean that you have to agree. And the way you are basically sold into this slavery is when your parents go and inform the government of your presence and existence here. And by informing me, they go to the registry, they go fill out this form, and they sign on the dotted line that says informant. It doesn't say parent, it says informant. Now, there's a space up top for the names of the guardians. But at the bottom, it says informant. Who's informing the government that you are you are existing and these are the people who are tied to you? Is usually someone, maybe your mother or maybe your father. And they're not wise enough to know that this is what that is because we never told this stuff. But then they take that information and they do all kinds of stuff with it to the point where obviously it gives them control over you. But now you put this in a digital form on your card on a computer that can be hacked and taken control over. If they want to delete you from the system where you can't do anything, get on a bus, buy food, go anywhere, travel, apply for anything, if they want to push a button and delete you, you're gone. Just like that. Just like that, you are gone. You're out of here, baby. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. So 
I want you all to get a chance. I'm going to put the link up, by the way. Let me go ahead. and In fact, let me put the link up for the first video um, for those who are interested in going and watching that one. Let me let me put that up. That link is in the comments below um, for those. The, well, the comments on the side, I should say, because the comments below, I get to find out are different something altogether. But the comments are going to be on the side. The link to that video about Kenya is there on the side. You can't miss it. And I'm going to put the I'm going to put the video link for this video up on this side right here. This is the video we did a time back with the brother Caswell Franklin, um, who shared a lot of information pertaining to the same. What was it? Digital ID. Hey, where we go? Pertaining to the same digital ID. Um, I'm going to share that link as well for those who might not have realized it. This is one of the older politically incorrect programs. This is maybe two years ago. I don't remember how when this was. When this was, this was like, yeah, about a year ago, give or take, give or take. It's about a year ago, and I'm telling you, the information that was brought up in this program, you got to go see. It, you know, so you haven't taken a look already. Go check. Go go check this one out. You must. This is a must see. Go see it because it's important. So I'm gonna put that link up there as well. Um, right after the other one, so that you can, you got them both simultaneously. Go check them out. Yeah, you go check those out and share that with your friends and family because this is happening. And so, of course, they always target the African countries, always target the African countries. It's like we can't escape it, can't escape it, man, at all. At all. If it ain't one thing, it'd be another. But we're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. The other thing I want you all to do, family, is pay attention to, I hate to say this, man, but this opposition gentleman, because I'm just saying, man, just saying, man, just saying, man, something ain't right. Something ain't right. All of a sudden, the opposition and by the way, shout out to Marcy Weeks and the others, the Mumba and the others who do their work as well, making it you know, a reality for to folks to pay attention, bringing awareness all across Barbados and the region, and by extension beyond that. Um, at this point, family, it's about awareness, man. People are unaware. and Anything that brings awareness, you know, I'm saluting all day, every day. Here's the thing, though. There's some things I like to see. You know, there's an opposition movement happening. It's growing steadily. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, somebody emerged as a leader of the opposition that happened to cross the floor that's currently involved with the Mia Motley administration. Like, I mean, if he came from somewhere else, like I say, uh, maybe, maybe, but you come right out of the same space that we trying to, you know, that we appoint up certain things and you just land in that position. The, and the thing is, the Nation newspaper, again, you got to listen to the words because the Nation article that Saturday morning was the official opposition leader. Now, why did the Nation newspaper found it, uh, find it necessary to label him as the official opposition leader, which give the suggestion that there's an unofficial opposition leader? Hmm. It means they're paying attention. And like I said, why would they put official opposition? Because prior to that, there was nobody in, in that position. There was nobody there. There was no opposition in, this, in, the, in the parliament. So if anything, he would now be the new opposition leader. But they said, nah, he is the official opposition leader. So I wonder who they were referring to when they said he is the official. Because by using the word official, what, like I said, they're suggesting is that there is an unofficial leader. I wonder who that would have been, though. <laughs> Nevertheless, these are little subtle things they do to expose their hand. And once you're paying attention, you have eyes to see, you're going to see it. Just my perspective, family. Just my perspective. Pay attention. Having said that, this brings us to the matter at hand. The grand moranage. Yes. What is that? That's a word I only discovered today, really, in my research for tonight. And I was like, wow, I like it. I like it. So I'm going to introduce it to y'all. For those who don't know, because I know y'all, a lot of y'all on here are brilliant and bright, and I'm merely playing catch up. A lot of y'all are way ahead of me on this. I'm just giving my perspective, and y'all are probably finding this to be enlightening at best. 
Yes, the Grand Marinage. The Grand Marinage. Look, get familiar with it. I totally love it. The Grand Marinage, for those who don't know that. Well, let me put it to you this way. Oh, man. Um, um, where do I start with this one? This one is so deep, right? Like, where do I start with it? I'm going to start at the beginning with it. I'm going right here first and foremost. I'm just going to go right here. Right here. This is the, I, well, I came across this, like I said, in my research today. It's called the uh, Untold History of Barbados Slave Escape Tactics, Black History. Now, again, you know, information, narrative. I found it interesting because once you know certain things, like based on research, like, I mean, I have a ton of books. And, and this one right here, if I can slide it out carefully without <laughs> toggling my book pyramid. Again, I always go back to this one. The Black Caribs, the Black Carib Wars. I always go back to this right here. This right here, St. Vincent, Joseph Chateauier. Shout out to St. Vincent, by the way, also known as Yaramin. And I know the Vincentians got this thing, you know, Bajans, this and Bajans, that. I want y'all Vincentians to know that majority of the Africans, mosquito, <laughs> hey, not no more. Majority of the Africans, or what they call the Vincentians, are really from Barbados. I just want y'all to know that. Majority of the Vincentians are from originally from Barbados. I hope the Vincentians watching. I don't I got any Vincentians on here tonight watching. Any Vincentians watching, I can show and prove that majority of Vincentians originally came from Barbados. We all want people, you know, one Caribbean. We gotta stop letting these flags and these colonial names divide us. Because I ask, I was every time I go to St. Vincent, I ask people where the word St. Vincent come from. And major, in fact, only one person in all my years of going there, one person ever told me, one person. Most people don't know. Pope Vincent was his name. It was named after a pope. Prior to that, it was known as Yaramin or Hyrun. But the Hyrun came because of the Maroons. The Maroons, the Hyruns. They were high science people, man. I'm going to show you the link tonight. I'm going to just reveal this tonight. So if you got family from Yaramin, if you got family from St. Vincent, go send them this right now. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to go and share this. 10 seconds to go share this. Do a little commercial break. Why not? Why not? Real news for the people in real time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You can't make this up. It's a fact. Listen, y'all going to love this, though. Go tell your people. You see this little war? Look, man, let me just get to the video. I'm just going to get to it. I'm going to play two sections of it. I won't play the whole thing. I'll play two sections. But as always, I'm going to copy the link, and put it in the comments for those who want to watch it, the whole thing a little later on. All right? So that's how we're going to work this one. But check this out, family. Check, check this out. In the 1670s, Barbados slave population exploded. By that time, Barbados had more people of African origin than the combined population of England's five other Caribbean colonies, including Jamaica. They even surpassed the total African-descended population in England itself. In Barbados, slaves resisted their conditions aggressively. They would slow down their work, pretend to be sick, or even revolt. While some would take short breaks without permission, others tried to escape for good. This act of escaping, often called marronage, was common in Barbados and other places where slavery existed. The act of escaping wasn't just about being absent without permission. It impacted the entire system of slavery by reducing the workforce, taking away valuable labor, and essentially denying the master's control over what he saw as his property. Escaped slaves were dangerous, as their actions could inspire or motivate other slaves to rebel. They survived by foraging and stealing and were a real concern for slave owners. Their very existence upset the social balance, serving as potential role models for the larger enslaved community. In this video, we will discuss the history of slave escapes on the island of Barbados. We will learn how they started, the escape strategies they used, and how they adjusted their tactics as the times changed to make sure they could get free and hopefully stay free. Stay free. In the beginning, Barbados was a densely forested country, with thick bushes covering many parts of the island. In the early days of plantation slavery, some slaves formed small groups hiding within these woods and raided plantations for food. 
the exact origins of these groups remain unclear. But it I want to pause it there real quick. The exact origin of these groups that were in the forest that were raiding the plantations, the origin of them, quote unquote, is unclear. Well, it's clear because we were here before. <laughs> we, we, we were here before they got here. That's where that's where we came from. And don't forget, Hillary Beckles said it himself that based on the archives in England, Barbados is the first genocide country in the Caribbean, meaning it's the first country they came to and killed basically or slaughtered the majority of people who lived here. But they didn't get everybody. We already had places we were hiding and whatnot. We already knew the terrain. We knew where to go where they couldn't go. It was densely forest. We knew the forest. They didn't know. We the originals. We didn't, they didn't have a clue what they were doing. But they caught who they caught and did what they did as best they could. But the rest of us was hiding and waiting on them. Barb Barbados and Barbadians were never passive. It's believed that most slaves initially escaped alone or with one partner to later join them. Some might have stayed hidden individually, while others shifted between solitude and group membership. Now, before we go any further, let's establish something. Research shows that there was a certain type or profile of the slave that typically is more likely to want to escape. The characteristics of the ones likely to want to escape include the following. First, the majority were males who were born in the Caribbean. Most were in their 20s or early 30s. Additionally, many were skilled or semi-skilled workers. They knew a trade, skill, skill, or had a vocation. Notably, the typical escaped slave originated from plantations or rural areas. Finally, mixed-race individuals made up a large number of escapees, especially towards the end of slavery in Barbados. Over the years, most escaped slaves, either alone or in tiny groups of maybe two or three, sought shelter in natural hideouts. As early as 1648, there are records of an English visitor to Barbados saying they saw, quote, unquote, many hundreds of rebel Negro slaves in the woods. In 1657, the English author, historian, and one-time slave owner, Richard Ligon, wrote, Cycles are very frequent, some small, others extremely large and capacious. The runaway Negroes often shelter themselves in these coverts, and in the night range abroad the country, and steal pigs, plantings, potatoes, and pull in, and bring it there, and feast all day upon what they stole the night before. And the nights being dark, and their bodies black, they escape undiscerned. Even today, you can find many caves scattered across Barbados. Additionally, the island's parishes are filled with forested gullies. Maroons would hide in these places, often for long periods, and their activities were perceived as menacing and unlawful. These maroons were also elusive. They'd switch hiding spots frequently, making it tough to locate them unless caught by surprise. By the late 1600s, changes in Barbados's environment led to fewer forests. This made it harder for maroons to form big groups and stay hidden for a long time. Well, you see, you see, you see. Somebody said that the Facebook Live is done. <laughs> I don't know, because I'm still on, so I'm not sure. Like, I can see myself still on, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's if that's accurate. But if that's the case, YouTube is still rolling, family. And we're going to still keep rolling. Ah, oh, man. Look, family. Um, anyhow, I'm going to show two parts of this. I'm going to go skip to the second one. There's a part where they talked about Barbadian revolts consistently, consistently most of the most violent revolts in the region, which is funny because they never talk about that in history class. People always talk about Bajans, too passive, Bajans, too passive. Well, maybe the Bajans, but I'm talking about the originals that were here. There was nothing passive about them. So you got to ask yourself, what happened to cause... Well, I'm going to leave that right there. But I want to skip to this other section. I'm going to go right to it, man. I'm, I'm going to go right to it. Uh, yeah, I want to get to this section right here. This is section, yeah. I believe this is it right here. But let me just double check on this. Somebody said that Facebook is en ended. I'm still here. I'm not sure. Um, checking the links, checking the comments. So my people are being used as puppets. It's a fact. We've always been the ones doing it, man. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Big P and I see you too, family. Daffodil, I see you too, family. I see you too, Clayton. Long time don't see my brother. It's good to see you again, bro. 
Facebook. Um, so I'm still here, clear. The water dry. Oh, the water. Okay. Well, here's the deal then. Um, if you're on Facebook and if you're all on Facebook and it's still up and running, give me some thumbs up. Give me some likes. Give me some hearts. Just let me know that y'all still there. Leave a comment saying I'm still here. I'm still here. Let me know what's going on. And and then because I'm I'm saying somebody say that the Facebook is done. If not, try to re, try to reload your page and try to come in again and see what happens, my brother. Yeah, see what's happening. In the meantime, I'm gonna press gas here and we gonna push forward. Rest y'all could catch up to us. We right here. We ain't we ain't going nowhere. Throughout the Caribbean, there was a significant trend of escapes by boat, termed maritime marinage by Jamaican historian Neville Hall. In Barbados, many escaped slaves hiding in places like Bridgetown were waiting for such escape opportunities. Later, direct evidence emerged about slaves escaping to nearby islands which were under French control using stolen boats. Some slaves might have had access to these boats due to their roles as fishermen or boatmen. Later accounts also mention slaves, particularly those with nautical skills, escaping via stolen boats to destinations as distant as the British Leeward Islands. The beautiful island of St. Vincent, located approximately 100 miles west of Barbados and known as a stronghold for Caribs, had become a sanctuary for escaped slaves by the 1660s, if not earlier. In 1668, Barbados's governor Willoughby entered into a treaty with several Carib chiefs. According to the treaty, the Caribs agreed to return escaped slaves from Barbados, both those who had previously fled and any future escapees. By early 1676, it's estimated that St. Vincent housed around 600 escaped slaves, some of whom had run away from Barbados and others from different locations. In 1700, Father Labat, a French priest, visited St. Vincent. He observed that the island's population was not just Carib Indians, but also included, as he put it, a very great number of fugitive Negroes for the most part from Barbados, which, being to windward, gives the runaways every possible facility for escaping from their master's plantations in boats or on piperies or rafts and taking refuge among the savages. The number of Negroes on St. Vincent has increased to such an extent, either by those born in the country or by those come from Barbados to join them, that it much surpasses that of the Caribs. Now he's claiming, and bear in mind I'm using the words, he, he's claiming that at that point there were more people in St. Vincent coming from Barbados than there were Caribs on the Aramean. Hence the Black Carib War. See what I'm saying? We were always here, the Maroons. The word Maroon itself speaks to who we are, those who escape. That's what the word basically means, those who escaped and fought. So that's what that was labeled as, you know what I'm saying? And what happened is that they went up, because when they came and stole and captured the land, they captured the land on paper. They didn't physically capture all the land. It's just too much land. There's some places they, they did, there are places they have never set foot. So what we did was we went to those places which we were already familiar with, those who were here from before, and we mixed with those that came after, and we worked together against the common enemy. The land was ours. It was always ours. And we utilized that land. In fact, we built colonies. We built, sorry, communities. I shouldn't use the word colonies. We built communities, villages, and we were striving, doing our own thing. So how we get in this position now? Over time, slaves developed various strategies to board ships and escape from Barbados. With many skilled slaves, such as tradesmen, being hired out by their owners, these individuals had relatively more freedom to move, especially in towns. An example is William, a 27-year-old mulatto man who was seen in St. Lucia after his escape from Barbados, claiming he was working to buy his freedom. Another tactic, which became possible with the rise of the freedman population by the late 18th century, was to falsely claim freedom and negotiate passage with a ship's captain. A notable case from 1802 involves a British naval vessel's captain accused of enticing slaves to board his ship. He defended himself by saying the slaves had approached him, asserting they were free and offering their services. I wonder if that is Nelson, but I ain't going to go no further with that one there. I'm going to leave it right there. So the question is, where am I going with this? Well, I'm going on to the land because in reality, they never captured all the land. When they said that we were, quote unquote, free, 
and we are free to go. Free to go where? The folks that were here that didn't escape, that work all them years on these plantations through hail, rain, sleet, and snow. Although I'm not really serious about the hail or the snow. The point is they work through harsh conditions. When they said, oh, y'all are free, free to go where? Because if they claim that they own all the land, where were we free to go? Where were they sending us to go? Because I understand the science. That's how you know that they couldn't have owned all the land. Because if they own all the land and then you say you were free to go, where were you supposed to go to? Allow me to introduce Exhibit C. Allow me to introduce Exhibit C. Let me go to another, let me go to one more video real quick. That is very pertinent. This one is about three minutes, so you're going to have to bear with me. But trust when I tell you, you're going to want to watch this. Maybe it's my feed. Okay, I see you. I see you. Um, I see you, Monica. Greetings to you, too. Shout out to all the kings and queens, for sure, for sure. Sell out Negroes. Got up all. Yeah, we know how it, we know how it is, man. <laughs> Alex, you got to stop it. Yo, check this out, though, family. Let me add this right here, right here. This right here, I'm just going to let this play. I'm just, let me just check the volume first, make sure the volume is right so y'all can hear it. And I'm just going to let this play. Uncultivated land in Jamaica was divided into two categories, crown land owned by England and back lands or uncultivated estate land. Even though black people eventually enjoyed some freedom, it was only on paper. After slaves were freed, they had literally nowhere to go. Let me pause it, by the way. Although this is about Jamaica, understand the reality is the same across the region. They didn't do anything any different because when they said you were free in terms of the land, what were we supposed to do and where were we supposed to go? So you can apply this to Barbados equally so. And by the way, that's the next documentary we're going to be watching and giving into, you know, the truth about Barbados. In other words, the truth about Jamaica. It's just a matter of changing the territory you're in. It's the same narrative. And once you hear it, you'll be able to recognize it. And this is why the land right now, this is why the land is such a thing that they're all grabbing it and all trying to grab at between crown land for those who are still under that illusion and those under the state's land, same illusion, just different hand. Believe you me, they're both puppets on the stage. The land belongs to you, the people. The people is who own the land. That's why I keep telling you, go get a land, go find a piece of land, go do the research on the land and claim it. Check this out, family. White landowners took advantage of this and charged hefty rental fees, making their former property unwilling tenants. Many black people took matters into their own hands and tried to secure lands themselves. The state hated this and passed a series of laws that made black people lose these lands. One of the government's most effective tools in the fight against black land ownership was taxation. The state introduced a raft of tax policies that were, well, ridiculous. When black people protested the unfair taxes, they were labeled squatters with a love of uncivilized ease, far too lazy for work. For those who could afford land, land and animal taxes cut away at already meager resources. But the government didn't stop there. By the 1850s, toll roads were commissioned near black-owned properties in an effort to drive them off. In 1859, residents in Westmoreland had had enough. Persons, including men disguised as women, took to the streets to protest the taxes that were preventing them from earning an honest living. That event became known as the 1859 Toleri
Sorry, sorry, you probably didn't try to check that real quick. My bad. Being changed. Almost five years later in 1865, the situation had gotten so bad that residents wrote to the Queen of England, demanding relief from the gruesome taxes and tolls. They begged for a fair chance to access lands in a country that was their home. She wrote back, telling them to stop complaining and to work harder to afford the lands. By October, a Baptist preacher named Paul Bogle led a protest following a court settlement on a St. Thomas land dispute. She, it's always about land. Always. A few days later, on October 11, 1865, Bogle led a march to Morant Bay Courthouse. That event, bowed by a cry for land equity, became known as the Morant Bay Rebellion. And yet, nothing changed. After the rebellion, the state doubled down, placing more taxes on black communities. Between 1871 and 1912, nearly 250,000 acres became property of the crown for the non-payment of taxes. And whenever a black person tried to access secured lands, the state met them with absolute violence. Remember the 1963 incident where rastas were forcibly removed from coral gardens and the surrounding areas? Yeah. Land. For three years, the state orchestrated a war against poor and black Indian Jamaicans living in Baku Wall to create Tivoli Gardens. Driven off the land they had occupied for years with no help from the state, many were forced to form informal settlements around Kingston. Almost a decade later in Rima, around 1,000 residents were driven out of their community over what was said to be non-payment of rent. Large lands in Jamaica, towns even, can be traced to plantation owners in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. This anti-black history of land rights and land access is why Bob Marley faced hostility when he lived on Hope Road in the 70s, and why Usain Bolt faced discrimination as a black resident in an upper-class neighborhood in Kingston and St. Andrew. Recently, the government has promised to put legislation in place to provide titles for persons who have been living and working on pieces of land for years. With the rising rental costs and increasing barriers to home ownership in Kingston and St. Andrew, the initiative just may help younger generations get a shot at owning a place of their own. Or black ancestors fought hard to try and secure lands, but Jamaica's colonial government did not allow them to. And, well... Modern governments have done nothing to fix systematic issues that define local land politics. Imagine that. They have done nothing. 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 Absolutely nothing to change that. Hey, Barbie, this is no difference. They have the audacity to talk about land tax. We taxing you for the land, this, that, and the third. Oh, it is now from Crown land. It is state land. When I showed you all the document where the queen said, I ain't have nothing to do with that land down there. That belonged to the people. And the government that took independence was just tricking the people talking about it was crown land. That's why it never said it was the land belonging to the queen. They only claimed it was crown land. What they did not tell you is who, who the crown is. The people of the crown. That's why they could take it. Come, Hold up. Think about it for a second. You're telling me that prior to independence barbus is a colony controlled by britain all right no problem we got independence given to us from britain okay no problem all that land that was supposed to be belonging to britain you're saying although we're independent that land all of a sudden still she gave us independence but you're saying no that land still belongs to her england now you turn barbados into a republic you are going to take from england a whole set of land but we're taking this now it is state land. Wait, hold on a minute. Did England transfer? I mean, since it is land and we deal with land and transfer and title deeds, if England owned the land based on title, crown land, and the Republic took the land, is they transfer documents that go that states the land that was previously colonial, then crown land is now being transferred? And is now known as state land. Is there a document that says that? Because if there's no document that says that, like I said again, family, go find yourself a spot and set up shop. 
straight straight I'm done talking man done i'm done ucd nhc hope corp ltd llc <laughs> there you go that's your transfer right there man is it not it belongs to mia bb dlp no comment alex no comment no comment is it look family you cannot make this up man you can't make this up. All I'm saying is that we have not been given the information thoroughly. We have not been given the right information thoroughly. So all I'm saying is at this point, there's some things we got to do, man. Alex is saying the 1756 map Bajans uh, are the owners. The crown brought the slaves from the masters, not land. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. Here's the best part. Here's the best part. When they paid for, when they paid back the owners for that, then all those free individuals should have gotten what is rightfully theirs. Because they paid for everything. But rather than give the, the individuals that were free, the homes they were in and whatnot, even the land, because they were paid for all of that, they were compensated for what they would have lost they say you're free to go. Then they turn around and rent out. They turn around and rent you the house you was in for a bunch of money. They made the rent so expensive, made it hard for you to really make something happen for yourself. Crazy, right? Hold on, man. Let me give you all peace more. Let me give you all peace more. Wait, hold on. Let me let me see here, man. Uh, there was one area. Uh, where's which was it? Which was it? Mm. Nah, I'm not do the harsh punishment. There was a section that talked about rent when when they came back after they were freed, quote unquote. How it was difficult because what they basically did, like I said, was they was taxing you. And then they charge you to, they rented you the slave hut that you were in for free before that. But they rented you so high that you could barely afford it. That don't sound like the rent today. You work all week, all month. I mean, you get that paid check, man. The rent is the first thing that tax you. These landlords. Landlord. Not homeowner. <laughs> The Lord of the land, the landlords. This thing go back here, family. It goes back and it's all relative. So like I said, man, we got to start having a different conversation, different conversation. I'm telling you, you got to stop begging the government to do for us what we should be doing for ourselves. We need to claim the land, take the land, full stop. And the onus is on them to prove otherwise. We're not going through this. We're not going through this. We gonna set up a system in such a way where they gonna have to acknowledge. How are you gonna tell me that you know you the government working on behalf of the people and all these hope projects, all these other different initiatives and the plantocracy? And again, if we do a forensic research, you will discover a lot of these major companies that are making a lot of the money and getting these contracts are directly linked to the plantations and the descendants of said plantations. I guarantee you, check it out. You're gonna find that. That's why nobody talks about that ever. You don't hear nobody talk about, oh, the white man in England. The white man didn't own all the plantations. I'm telling you, a lot of black folks, mulatto folks, or whatever you want to call them, mixed folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of folks look just like me and you, man, was running this program from back then. Ain't nothing changed. They still run the program. Pedigree, they call themselves, having pedigree. But that's all right. We were here before. We're still here. You can't blame the white man for everything, man. At some point, we got to realize that we're going to have to work together as a people because amongst us, there's some that look like you that ain't no good and there's some that look like them that ain't no good. But equally so, there's some amongst them that are very good and there's some among us that are equally good. So let's not make this a color thing, but a right and a wrong thing. How that song instead? Let's make it a right and wrong thing rather than a color thing because it's at that level, family. <laughs> I 
I gonna tell you this, right, family? Like I said, we do have nights, we do theater nights, and we do review documentaries. And if you're interested in that, the number is on the screen. Um, if you're interested in being a part of the theater night where we do review information, we discuss stuff afterwards, the number is uh, area code 246-838-8253. Feel free to send us a WhatsApp, tell us you want a ticket, and we'll be sure to send you a link on the next, well, I'll be saying information pertaining to what's coming up. Also, equally, if you want to get involved in the FADE movement, FADE initiative, Barbados National Congress, feel free to do so. Um, be at the same number. Let us know you're interested in FADE. Someone will contact you. And I thank the folks who reached out in the last couple of days. I can believe the response was crazy. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I mean, I said it, but I didn't see that coming. But um, it's humbling, and I thank you for entrusting me with your information about your families and the situations that y'all are going through that are similar. And I heard that the brother, Mr. Payne, is not physically well. I heard he's not well. I don't know how true that is, but I like somebody who has connections with him to give us a call and let us know. I would hate to think that he's not well because I would like him to at least respond to some of these questions. Nevertheless, we do understand how universal law works. And so we, we will work on that. Yeah, we're going to work on that. Hold on a second. There's a question. Olivia de Pisa, um, welcome to Politically Incorrect. I don't recognize the name. Um, I don't know if you're here for the first time. The question is, I don't understand what's the intention here. Are you encouraging people to buy land or not? Well, this is what I'm saying uh, at this point. If you have someone that you know that you can vouch for indirectly, interacting you interested in purchasing land that they have that's a contract between you and them as far as the land that is across barbados that is supposed to be state's land that they claim belong to the crown previously that was part of the colony called barbados no i'm not encouraging anyone to go and purchase that land because in reality who are you buying it from like who are you buying it from so according to the law of barbados and again if i'm wrong correct me and I did read that law, and I don't have the Constitution up tonight on that, but I did pull it up recently because someone said they wanted a copy. It states that you can approach your minister regarding Crown land, but well, this was at the time before they, well, it was Crown land because there's the old Constitution. We only have a Constitution. Although they said they changed the, new, the old one and made it the new one, well, I guess the words just got changed from Crown to state, but the information is basically the same. So what it said was, you can go forward and ask your minister regarding Crown land and the minister has the authority to A, sell you at a nominal fee, lease it to you, or give it to you. That's what is written in the Constitution. Regarding, um, well, it didn't say adverse possession, but regarding ownership of what is considered Crown land. If it is sitting there and you're occupying it and you've been occupying it and you're working with it, you can approach the minister and inform him, listen, I'm working this land, I'm claiming this land. And he has the authority, according to the law, and I read it right here, that he can do one of the above mentioned things, including gift it to you for free. That is what I'm encouraging folks to do. Find a spot of land if you've been on that land and claim the land. There's plenty land. Plenty, plenty land. I mean, I showed a Google map the other day. There's plenty. What, Barbados? Google. Let me see if I can find it again. I don't even know if I can find it. There's plenty of land in BIM. Nobody fool you that sit there doing absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, this, oh, I know what this is. Let me, let me see if I can find it. There we go. There we go. Like I said, there's Barbados and there's plenty of areas where there's land just sitting there. Like, like right here, all in St. Andrew. St. John, St. Thomas. I'm actually looking at it right now. Yeah, plenty of plenty of land. St. Philip, especially St. Philip. Lots of land. And although there's plenty of areas that seem to be carved up for the purpose of agriculture, it's just sitting there and it growing nothing but bush. There's no farming going on. None. None. In fact, these plantations that have privilege and try to get a lot of stuff exempt because of their farmers license and whatnot, if they have not cultivated any crops in at least 
four years, for example, they should automatically lose that status. I'm just saying. Because a lot of this land been sitting there doing nothing. I could show you right now. Just sitting there doing nothing. So that's where I'm going, um, sis, right there, Olivia. I'm not telling anybody to go and, you know, and get in a confrontation with anyone. I'm just saying. There's a lot of land sitting down doing nothing. Go claim a piece. Like Draxall Plantation. Let me call one, for example. Draxall Plantation is one. There's nobody in Barbados that has authority to claim Draxall or work on behalf of Mr. Draxall and tell you that you can't claim part of Draxall Plantation. Mr. The, the, the descendant from Draxall is the guy in England, the minister in England, and he said he ain't giving it up. He said, he, I wasn't there involved in the slavery. My parents took that and they give it to me and I keeping it. Well, if he has that mindset, then like I said, well, your family worked there and you work there and you ha have a right to it, so you take it. Take it, just take it. Let him come all the way down to Barbados and pull you in court and we have that conversation then. Since you wasn't there when it happened and you claim you got it through inheritance, well, guess what? I was there, my parents were there working it and I got it through inheritance too. I mean, after all, possession is nine tenths. We worked on that for years. Adverse possession, generation. Simple as that, man. That's, that's what I'm telling you, Olivia. That's my position. We're taking the land, man. We're not asking no permission. We know we, we notifying the government that we're taking the land. That's the position I'm on, man. Full stop. Joe's River, same thing. We're not asking. We just take it. I mean, they took it and told you, well, let me take it back. And that's it. Wherever, the, where, wherever that goes after that, we go after that. You gotta have that mentality, family. Is that if we in this 100 or we, you know, are we playing hot potato? That's it, man. Anyhow, what time is it? Oh man. Well, like I said, I didn't, I didn't, I just wanted to share that tonight. Like I said, numbers on the screen, family, for those who are interested in getting involved and knowing more information. We have lots of documents, including the one I just told you about um, regarding the land and what the ministers can and can't do. Number is 246-838-8253. Send us a WhatsApp. No problem. We get the information to you. You want to get involved in FADE, let it be known. If you want to get involved in the theater nights, also let that be known. And we're going, we going to go from there. So having said that, oh, man, the land is sitting there for the ministers to change the purpose of the land and then sell it off to outsiders. Wait, how you know it's a good... Clayton, how you know it's so good? Because it got to sit for a while before you could turn agriculture land into residential land. Yep. 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 And let me show you this thing, man. Let me show you. Let me give you all a topography view. A topography. Well, a topography view, I suppose. Topography is a view of what's happening in BIM. We well, ought to check this out for real. Look at the amount of agriculture land that is not in production. And you know how you know it's done in production? When you see this large foliage on the, for, on the beds. Because unless they grow in trees, yams and cassava don't look like that here. Not from this distance, but at a glance at Barbados, I mean, there's, there's so, where do we start? Where do we start from, family? Let me start in St. Philip. I mean, you can see a lot of the areas that are carved out in terms of beds of course if it is brown it means that it is just dirt <laughs> that's if you see it brown it means it's just dirt just till plow just dirt bottom line just dirt ain't nothing going on it is just dirt just dirt dry dirt nothing going on nothing going on in the vegetation growing ain't nothing growing you see these beds you might get a few beds maybe a little sweet potato vine or whatever perhaps maybe but see this kind of foliage, like this dense foliage right here, you see right here, see this kind of foliage? Most of the river tamarins and that kind of stuff, more often than not. There ain't no yam, there ain't no cassava, there ain't nothing like that. So as you start seeing heavy foliage, you know that is nothing growing of significance. And you look at it, it's mostly dry areas. You might find one or two areas that got a little something, for the most part, in nothing growing. Now, I don't know when last this map was updated, but Google Earth updates ever so often. I don't know how frequently, but again, nevertheless, we get this section right here now. Um, you see the difference, this dense foliage again. Grass, 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 foliage, foliage, foliage. 
grass, foliage, little dry area, foliage, foliage, ain't nothing growing. It's all grass, bush, trees. Well, a lot of them growing bales, by the way. They grow grass because they grow grass to cut for the horses. So they grow, a lot of them grow grass. They, a lot of them are working, but they're just growing grass. But that's not really considered agriculture, just for the record. So they still make money while they're sitting on it before it's transfer. But a lot of it is just grass. Again, the brown is dry ground. All that green is foliage. Sometimes that green is probably a gully following the water channel. It's a possibility. And but grass, grass. But the point I want to make is there's so much land in Barbados just sitting around there. Look, all here, look, all this land. Just sit, I mean, like a whole area. You wouldn't see a house nowhere in sight. Like this whole Walkers area, Hoyts area, St. Simmons uh, Church on that side, Turner's Hall Woods. Well, Turner Hall Woods is all woods. You know that's preserved. And so Haggett. Haggits, I mean, Chalky Mount. Anyhow, the point I want to make, family, is that there's plenty of land in Barbados for those who are serious about doing certain things. They sign papers for money, not to grow, but to buy from them overseas. Stop it. it Say, please share, please share the video. Um, which video are you referring to, Jackie? Which video are you referring to? The link. Um, I'm not sure which one you're referring to, Jackie. You get a chance to answer that question for me so I can put it up. But that's what's going on, family. So like I said, I ain't going to stick up much longer. Wrong. It's 4.9 trillion US dollars. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I missed a question. What is this? Yo, John, Mr. Scantleberry, what are you talking about here, man? Oh, I see. Alex gave a question. Alex said, "My uh, may I give England a bill for four point nine billion, and we still being taxed by the same year to pay back ourselves." Like, oh, I got it. So your response was, "It's not four point nine billion. It's four point nine trillion. Yo, wait, hold on. Don't tell me that. Bring the papers, family, because folks are. I want it. They, they're gonna want to see. I I thought I did put that that video up, Jackie. If I didn't, I'm gonna post it again." Give me a second. Hang on. And copy that. Uh, give thanks. Give thanks. Let me put that up there again. All right. Let me put it here. All right. There you go, Jackie. Let me post this for you. Okay, there's a link to that video, like I said, about Barbados. That link is on the screen. I'm going to play one more clip on this part. This is the part that I want to emphasize especially, how they work together. Slaves who had not escaped would start helping other escaped slaves, often providing shelter and assistance. As early as 1661, laws were updated to include searching slave houses for hidden escapees. These searches indicate that slaves harboring maroons was a common occurrence. Apart from shelter and food, escaped slaves were also given things like forged letters to help them remain free. As more slaves learned to read and write, they used this knowledge to create fake documents, making it harder to catch escapees. Escaped slaves needed to be able to maintain their independence and earn money if they ever wanted to have any hope of being able to remain free. When living in the bush wasn't an option anymore, escaped slaves developed a new escape strategy, one that they hoped would help them not only get free, but stay free. Living in densely populated urban areas was the next escape strategy. Slaves, whether looking for a short break or a permanent escape from plantations, were increasingly drawn to towns, especially Bridgetown, the capital of the island. Towns provided numerous advantages, firstly with employment, in towns, skilled slaves could find more work opportunities. Also, as an avenue of escape, those wanting permanent freedom benefited from the fact that towns offered chances to connect with ship captains who might take them abroad. Finally, they loved the anonymity. In the bustling urban areas, slaves could blend in and pretend to be free. This trend was common not just in Barbados, but in other colonies too. Newspaper ads at the time often highlighted this. Owners would describe escaped slaves as being crafty or good at pretending to be free. 
For instance, some slaves were so articulate or had such fair complexions, they could easily be mistaken for free men or even white individuals. Mm -hmm. Easily mistaken for white individuals. I'm going to leave you with that thought, family. Anyhow, family, give thanks. Give thanks. Like I said, they work together. Those who were not free work to help those who are seeking their freedom. So having said that, I say to all the people who I know work within the framework of the system, we give thanks for all of you who do what you do, how you do what you do. You know what I'm talking about? Maximum salute to you. Continue the works. We going to get through this, man. We going to get through this. Because we fully grasp that we need each other. That's why we can be trying. That's why I tell folks, don't be trying to get hard on people who took the vaccine, that kind of stuff, because people did what they had, what they felt they had to do. All we could do is help each other along this way. Let's help each other along this way. Make it easier. Make it easier. That's all it is about, man. So I give thanks as always, family, for those of y'all who tune in and, and, and share your energy, share your synergy, and you know, give thanks for telling a friend who tell a friend because I'm getting the calls, family, from all parts of the globe. It's crazy. And it's humbling because to think that we started this program as a joke. And I say it's a joke because we were just making fun of the nonsensical, th the real nonsensical things that the politicians were saying at the heights of the, the, the COVID season. Yeah, I could say the word. That's it. You know, report me, report me. Like, who cares? <laughs> do whatever we all want to do. Y'all don't control this. You know what I mean? So we give thanks, man. Don't let them immiserate you. Don't let them do it. In fact, in 2024, make that your make that your objective. Do not let them immiserate you. Be sure that you keep that in your consciousness when you leave your house in the morning. When you talk to your children, be sure to teach them how to stay free, how to keep free consciously. Especially if they go to these schools, like I told you, I got to do a whole special on the education system in Barbados. I'm putting together some information slowly. And I know that that's going to offend some people, even my own associates that I might know who might be in that position within the system. But I'm going to have to tell the truth, man. See the educational system, the way it is, I ain't even discussing how they plan to change it. Because they're talking some crazy stuff too when it comes to all that gender crap and all that other confusing nonsense. I ain't even touching that. I dealing with the education in terms of what education is really supposed to be all about. Right now, we need to really unbox that. Anyhow, family, like I said, give thanks for the energy, the synergy, and for those staying tuned. Uh, Y'all already know, anybody could guess, in fact, in fact, in fact, hold on a second. Let me, let me say this. Hold on a second. I have, I have with me tonight, I have a free giveaway tonight. Hold on, I have a giveaway. I have a giveaway tonight. For anybody who could text, who could type in the comments right there, which song I'm going to play tonight. It should be obvious, but I have a I have a giveaway. I have a politically incorrect shirt. One one politically incorrect shirt. Army green politically incorrect shirt for anybody who could tell me what song which what tune are you gonna play next? <laughs> what, what song are you gonna play tonight? What song are you gonna play tonight? I'm, I'm gonna see if you already pay attention. Let me I'm gonna see if you're already paying attention. I got one free shirt giveaway. Well, providing you in Barbados. If you're not in Barbados, uh, I would go and send it however I send it. You would still get it, but maybe not as fast. But she would still get it. Army Green. That's what's up. Politically incorrect, man. I'll get over you. Uh, you know what, Alex? You funny. You know, I, th I just think you want one of the shirts, Alex. You know, but no, it's not. That's not the tune, man. That's not the tune. That is not the tune. Daffodil, where you at, Daffodil? I know that somebody said to Bob Marley. Uh, it would be nice to play a Bob Marley. It would be nice to play a Bob Marley. That's close. That's close. That's close. Anybody else? Let me see here, man. I mean, it should be definitely obvious. I'd like to give you a hint, but I don't want to give you a hint just yet. So I give you a hint? You think I should give you all a hint? Should I give you all a hint? Let me see. Somebody say redemption song. Okay, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. You see, you see more, you see more. You trying to be funny, guys? I've been paying Rima all week. I, you know that, but I ain't going. Nah, not tonight, not tonight, not tonight. Trinidad song, nah, not the Trinidadian brother Octavia, not that one. 
I even got a Dennis Brown. A Dennis Brown. I ain't played no Dennis Brown in a minute. And the truth is, I ain't played no culture in a minute. Crazy. The education system, the education system is an indoctrination system. Facts. Are we going to deal with it, though? It'd be nice to play a little boju, but uh-uh. I'll give you all one more. Daffodil, daffodil, daffodil. Come on, daffodil. You know we're getting on cheese on. Look, I would love, Sophia, I ain't going front, right? I would love to play Midnight, especially Midnight and that sister Desiree. Y'all heard Midnight and Desiree. In fact, I going to still play Midnight and Desiree, but I going to play after the original tune I got lined up. I'm going to give one a hint, man. Hold on. I'm going to give one a hint. 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 That's all I can play right there. That, that's all I can play right there. That's all I can play right there. That's all I can play. Y'all heard that? If y'all heard that, let me know, man. I'm going to give y'all a little hint again. Just a little hint. Just that little hint right there. Anybody can tell me? Yes, Desiree is the bomb. She is the bomb for sure, for sure. Man, look, man. You see, like, if this is like a lottery ticket, yeah. More, I got you more. I miss the old slave driver. I got you more. I miss catching up on I got you the more. old slave driver. I got you more. I know you seen this in my arms. So yeah. carry me go home. I bring the run and eat. Cheese on. Nice to dread and terror upon them. Who's got a face that will I have his mercy. Capture land, capture land, capture land. Slave driver. Slave driver. Time is catching up on. Time is catching up. Oh, slave driver. Time is catching up, man. I know you seen them my on. So carry we go home. Carry we go home. Bring the run at ease. Bring wrong the east. I'm on a rasta, man. And as a rasta, man. I'm on a rasta, man. I'm on a rasta, man. I want to capture land. Yeah, man. Get documents, man. Bring we go home. We can write our own. We have no more jurisdiction. Sovereignty for real family. Yes. Caribbean, the one rasta, in a plantation. I mean, cross once she blew the African. Now here comes the thief in queen from me. The thief in queen, man. 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 Stop paying the taxes, man. Stop paying the taxes. I'm in order that jurisdiction. Free. Go to Temple Yard, by the way. Got to do right by Temple Yard, I hear. Got to do right by Temple Yard in Barbados, yeah. Because downtown of Shatta. I didn't know who y'all got working, but. Let me one of this right here. Make me start a new chapter. Start a new chapter. Yeah, Pani Land, where them chapters. Yeah, Pani Land, up with a chapter. Africa, we all do rasta. I saw go tell you and two plus factors. Go tell them. Carry we go home. Go and tell them. I bring the run a eat. We are coming. Come on a rasta, man. We are many. I know you can no chapter, man. And we are taking no prisoners. Carry we go home. Carry we go home. I said we take a land. Way, yeah, man, I'm in a lip on a chapter, lip on a chapter, follow me down. 
every garden a capital and uh, me tell you shot to say that a capital and uh, uh, Los Angeles that a capital and uh, uh, New York City that a capital and uh, uh, hey, so much the place where you want to live sweet a thief in the land there's no title feet no title for thief in land where you want to live a nice high uh, keep them thief it in the name of Christ hey. Spanish town that a capital and uh, the whole of Kingston that a capital and uh, Remember Portland that a capital and uh, What's it, what's it? Don't have to that that a capital and yeah. yeah. Some Barbados and Barbados and The whole of St. Vincent that a capital and uh, The whole of Dominica that a capital and uh, And Antigua too Say that a capital and uh, <laughs> Freedom is a must, family. Freedom is a must. Freedom is a must, family. Freedom is a must. Serious, 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 serious. Oh, man. Midnight and Desiree. Yes, you gotta find out soon. Yes, family, that one right there. That one right there. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. Now, I found the whole thing. Gee, don't, I don't want the whole thing. I just want that one little clip I normally play. I didn't even know to find that. No. That ain't true, man. I know to find that, man. I just got to do this right here. Do this right here. Family, look, I give thanks, man. I tell you, it's Captain Land. We dealing with the vibes. Yeah. The vibes. We dealing with the vibes. Hold on. Let me find the one, man. There's a re and midnight. Scroll through this little playlist real quick. Got to pop up. Got to pop up, man. But you see, I thought y'all, I see that more grab that tune based on a little clip, but I know a lot of y'all may not know that little intro, but that little piece right there give more the advantage. So more, you gotta definitely hit me up for sure. You know your number on the screen, shout me. I will link you and drop off the piece for you. Just so the army green, you could just flex it when you're on your move. You know what I mean? Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Oh man, Desiree, where you there? Where you there? Where you there? Where you there? Looking for it, looking for it. It's only right so far. Ah, there it is, there it is. See, there it is. Wait, I'm finding all of them. Which one are you going to play? Boy, this is a rough one here now, yeah. Let me try this one. This one here. And put this one on, man. That's a Yeah, and put a piece of this one here. I think this is it here, man. This is the best one to go with, right? Because I know how it is, man. Put another piece of this Desiree on. Yeah, I know, I know that. I like start, man. I know I start. Bargains the woman melanin. Vikings fertility with sterilization. Message. They bring drugs in the hood to bring down population. Guns in the hood to bring down population. Planned parenthood to bring down population. Poison the food to bring down population. Then start a mortal combat. This is a message. Be immortal combat. This is a message for the people. Then start a mortal combat. Listen carefully, family. Be an immortal combat. <laughs> Why can't the woman melanin? Fight and fertility with sterilization. They bring drugs in the hood to bring down population. Guns in the hood to bring down population. Plan parents to bring down population. Poison the food to bring down population. Listen, this population reduction thing is not only against the blacks. Be aware of that, okay? It's not, it's against all of us. <laughs> Fact. Why can't the woman melanin? Fighting for the little with sterilization. They 
It's a message, family. Who started? Yeah, we gonna finish it. We gonna set it straight. We can't put things in order. We can't put it in order, family. Set it straight, family. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell a friend to tell a friend, family. What's up, man? Yes, family. Yes, family. I got a whole playlist, man. Y'all could imagine what my playlist looked like. Y'all could imagine what my playlist looked like if y'all was to see this at all. At all, at all, at all. I feel like I would like this one that's read that I so love, right? Like I love this song. I mean, I so love this song. Like, so love this song. Anyhow, we wanted nights we do a whole Zoom presentation and do a little live session on the Zoom. We have a Zoom party family because we do it on Facebook and stuff. They might shut it off, you know, copyright infringement, this kind of thing. But maybe one of these nights we could do a Zoom session, a whole Zoom session of conscious vibes. We probably come on like maybe 10 o'clock for those who could survive it and go on to like two in the morning or something, let it play out to the sunrise or something. And then hold a sunrise meditation or something with some divine readings and stuff and some testimonies or something like that. You know, just a, a whole vibes. You know, if y'all would like something like that, let me know. Put it in the comments. You know, yeah, let me know y'all interested in that or you know, WhatsApp me or whatever. Let me know because it's so exciting like to happen, man. <laughs> Sound possible, family. At least the last the first Cyprus was there, man. In. One perfect balance. Oh, 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 to live with pulling me around. We can't pretend like nothing's wrong. Got to defend rights. Four types of slavery to this and there ever was. Different levels of it in abundance. Oh, oh, oh. The 
these melodies here, sweet family, sweet man. Tell a friend to tell a friend from. So we'll have a beautiful and peaceful and upful and restful night. Oh, ah. Be all in the celestial realms later, man. Try praying to your man, it's try for me, Salah. Oh, oh. We dicked in watching, I'm hoping we'll stop this trap. Oh, oh. Yes, Jackie, this is called Mystic Music, man. Do a late night session, man. Quickly hold a meditation, fam. Like your incense, your frankincense, your mirth. Channeling pure positive energy in these dark days. Just to be the light that coming forward, family. We can't pretend like nothing's wrong. Just to be the light coming forward, family. Got to reflect. Get to know yourself, man. Spend so much time sketching up in out of our lives. Yes. In our evil ways to improvise. Yes. Oh. Tell a friend and tell a friend, family. Uh. This is a whole meditation session from the connection. Economic groups and psychological games. One solid if I only seek me things. Oh. You're gonna hook up family Friday night for sure. Uh, Friday night for sure, man. I hear some people say that's every don't take That's quite clear to this. You saw a night, my just close your eyes and vibes. Oh. Go into yourself, man, and just your higher self, family. And that's exactly what it wants us to believe. The key first, the kingdom, family. Oh. Elevate your consciousness from the physical to the spiritual, man. Escape the matrix. Escape the matrix. I still pretend like nothing's wrong. Living Feel the vibes, family. Feel the vibes, family. That's how you know you're in the right place, family. Frequency, man. Tune in, tune in, tune in. We can plan our session for sure, family. I know a few local DJs, man. The family in the Virgin Islands, man. Tamara. We can't pretend like nothing's wrong. We can make this thing happen on another level, family. Right. Thank you.